Okay, let's do our warm-ups and just a little gentle stretching today. So bring your shoulders back and down, toes straight ahead, knees going toward your second toes, sitting bones toward the floor, core activated, shoulders back and down, and then crown to the ceiling. Take a moment to do that inhalation, bringing your awareness inward. And as you exhale, on the strength and tension release. Spread your toes, relax your shoulders, and bring your arms to shoulder level. Stretch those fingertips out, hands resting, crown high. Exhale, hands to your heart. Stretch way out to the front, keep the shoulders down as you do that. And then bring your hands behind, just gently clasp the fingers and lift your heart as you press the hands down. Exhale, pivoting at your hips, hands up, head down. So bring those hands toward your head and your head toward your legs. Lift your sitting bones, move your chin, let that neck get a little release. And then bend your knees slightly, drop your sitting bones around from the bottom of your spine all the way to the top and into that upper body for your back bend. Stretch your head back, drop your shoulders, and don't forget to breathe. And then inhale upright, release your arms, and just take a moment feeling what's going on as you warm up. And again, arms at shoulder level, hands to your chest, stretch to the front, shoulders down, and clasp your hands behind you. Again, lift your heart and stretch your head back, get a good lengthening through the whole body, and pivot on over. Let that lower back get a nice stretch as you deepen your head toward your legs. Shoulders release and slowly work your way up into the back bend one more time. Lengthen so that whole back of the body keeps stretching even in the back bend as you lift your heart. And then inhale upright, release your arms, and just take a moment again, noticing that yoga response internally. Side stretches, let's do both arms out, palms up, hands right above your shoulders. Clasp your hands, bring them back by your ears. Stretch and keep everything facing the front and lean over to one side. Let's the body lean away from down and get those ribs opening, feel the other side contract, and as always, don't lean forward. Stretching and breathing. Inhale back up, keep the shoulders down as you switch the other hand to the front. And again, arms by the ears, everything straight, stretching and leaning to the other side. Up down and hands and head are reaching away. Keep that shoulder back, not leaning forward. Take a few breaths there, lengthening through the side. And then inhale back to the top and release once more. Mountain pose, sides a little bit more open. And then spine really opening for our twist. So base of the skull, base of the spine, stretch apart. Arms out, shoulder level. Keep those shoulders down as you turn the hands, palms up and bring them over your shoulders. Clasp your elbows, stretch the spine apart again, and then turn to twist. Keep the arms by your ears and the weight on both feet evenly as you pivot over. Stay in the twist, just relax, and don't forget to breathe. Inhaling, come on back up, lift your heart again, and drop those shoulders behind you. Stretch the elbows and head away and as you breathe. And on an inhalation, come on back up. Exhale around to the center. Switch those arms around. And again, everything stretching apart to twist to the other side. Weight on both feet as evenly as you can. Arms by your ears. Everything pivoting over. Again, the weight on both feet evenly as you relax. Notice what's going on for you. And when you're ready, bring your body back up into that upper body back bend. Always gentle on your low back in the twists. Take a breath and just relax. Inhale upright, exhale around to the center. Shoulders down, fingertips up, extended mountain. 
Feel that sinking into your feet evenly. Sitting bones down, core active, shoulders relaxing. Keep breathing, reaching your head and fingertips up. Sink evenly into your feet. Pivot at your hips, keep the arms by your ears. Back as straight as you can, come parallel to the floor. Spread it out, and then just drop it around, doll. Walk your hands over to one side. Get a little more stretch and twist. Back to the center and over to the other side. Keep that whole spine nice and long as you twist. And back to the center. Pull in a little deeper for more stretch if you love it. And then arms back to the front, knees slightly bent. And once more, work your way all the way up. Shoulders back and down a couple of times and back into mountain pose. As you get into your mountain pose, take a moment, remember that yoga focus inward, noticing how your body responds as we practice. Spread your toes, turn the toes slightly out, knees toward the toes always, so the whole leg turns. Bend your knees slightly and another little twist. So bring your shoulders over your knees, Hands above your knees, remember no pressure there. And we're gonna twist, so stretch your spine apart, sitting bones and crown apart. And then bring the shoulder across and down toward the knee. And the whole body turning slightly to the sides, hips, ribs, shoulder, everything, not just turning your head. Take a breath, stretch it out, lengthening deep and maybe a little further. And then return to the center. Everything straight and stretched apart. And we'll go the other way, shoulder to the opposite knee. And everything turning to that other side. Keep lengthening as you do that, getting those bones stretching apart for twisting. And then again, back to the center. And round your shoulders and come on back up. And into your standing position. You keep those knees or toes out. We're going to bend the knees again and do our pelvic tilts. So remember, shoulders stay above the knee, uh, above the toes on this one. Again, hands have no pressure in them. And we're going into the back bend. So chest forward, sitting bones back, looking to the front. Keep stretching through your neck. Don't let it crunch together. And then sitting bones tucked down and forward, ribs in, rounding into that C-shaped forward bend as much as your body wants to do. Inhaling, back bending, maximizing wherever it feels right for you through the hips, the ribs, or the chest. And rounding and coming into that contraction, getting those abs working a little bit too. Inhaling, back bending, exhaling, rounding. Just at your own pace a couple more times, letting everything really get moving through the spine. And the next time you're forward, just pause and come on back up into mountain pose. Take a moment there, just feeling all that energy through the spine, stimulating and warming you. Bring your arms out, palms toward the ceiling, hands above your shoulders. Put one side up, come up on the opposite toes, so lifting the heel on that other foot. This side stays flat. Get that stretch through the whole side of your body. Lengthen up through the head and fingers. Sink into that foot. Really feel that stretch. Exhale that side down, other side up again on the toes, not the heel on that other foot. Sink into this foot that you're standing on and really stretch through the fingers and the head. Remember though, keep the shoulders toward your waist. I know it makes it challenging. And down, let's do the same thing again, stretch up. Exhale and release, stretch the other side up. And release both arms up. Keep the arms by your ears. Pivot again forward. Push those sitting bones slightly back. Stretch it out parallel to the floor. Reach the fingers and the sitting bones away. And again, drop into red dot. Just hanging. Exhaling tension. 
And then bend your knees slightly and move hips to one side and then to the other side. And back in the center, row up one more time. Bring the shoulders again up, back, and down. Bring your arms out to shoulder level and bend your fingertips together at the front of your chest. Keep the elbows at shoulder level and then pull the hands apart, elbows back, shoulder level still. And together, bring the hands out, around, and toward the back as far as they want to go. And back together. And just again, fingertips parting and together, arms reaching way around and back to the center. And release. And again, let's do those backstroke and swimming shoulder work. Keep the shoulders away from your ears as you do this, but bring the arm in close to your ear. And just feel the whole body work a little bit as you go through that range of motion. And then releasing again into mountain pose. Bring your feet together. Bend your knees forward, but not beyond your toes. Again, hands above the knees without pressure. And just circle the knees around, getting that lower back, getting a little bit more work out. So feet working, lower body working, just everything circling. Stop in the middle and go the other way. So circling both ways, balancing things in your body. And then coming back to the center, find that spot out in front and lift your heels, coming out to the balls of your feet, base of your toes, spreading the toes themselves, not gripping with the toes, finding your balance. Breathe and relax. And then roll back onto your heels and up onto your toes. Get that whole bottom of your foot, arches, ankles, knees, everything in your lower body working. And once again, coming back up into mountain pose. Hands on your back. Heels up the palms on the shoulder, lower shoulder blades, fingertips down toward your hips. Elbows toward each other, feel that chest expand. And then push your hips just a little bit right above the ankles and lift your heart and push your head back, coming into a nice upper body back bend with support on that lower back. Take a breath, exhale. Chin toward your chest, coming back up, releasing. And then clasp your arms behind you or fingertips up between your shoulder blades into a reverse prayer position. And bend your knees, big circles with those hips. It's a nice, gentle workout through that whole lower body. And then stop and circle the other way. Keep breathing as you let that whole body get a nice, gentle workout. And back up into mountain pose. Just take a moment, feel that sinking into your base of the toes and heels evenly. Bring your hands to your heart. Look at the hands, inhale, bringing them toward the ceiling. Keep focusing on those thumbs as you pull them back as far as you want, lifting your heart, shoulder blades toward your waist. Exhale, hands to your heart, pivot on over, drop into ragdoll, just take a moment, and then slide your hands up under your knees onto your shins. Gentle pressure on your shins, keeping your elbows, knees, and spine straight. Exhale back down, bending your knees, hands together. Again, let's do a nice little back bend as you bring those hands all the way up and behind you. Exhale, hands to your heart, coming back into mountain pose. As you get into mountain pose, keep your feet hip width apart, knees toward your toes. We'll do our balance practice. So remember, base of the toes, ball of the foot being your support, not the toes themselves. Spread those toes out as you put them back down. Make sure the knee is going toward the second toe, so get that rounding, making sure that everything is lined up, ankle, knee, hip, shoulder. Or active, so keep those ribs toward your spine and up, supporting your low back. 
When you're ready, reach the crown up and bring the other foot off the floor. Just a little if you're challenged today or further up towards your head. You can pull it in, and then when you're comfortable and stable, circle your ankle both ways. And then flex and point it as you release that leg back into mountain pose. Take what worked on that side and improve what you need to. So again, spreading the toes, getting the ball of the foot really connected, as well as the heel. Everything lined up with the core active and the shoulders back and down and the crown high. And bring the other foot when you're ready. Remember, if you're challenged, you can keep that foot low. That's okay. And wherever you are, go ahead when you're ready to circle the ankle both ways. Keep those ankles nice and flexible so we don't get all stiff and old. And again, flex and point, putting it back down so everything's nicely aligned. Spread your toes as you get down. Keep that core active. Keep the shoulders relaxing. And once more, hands to your heart. Inhale, bring them toward the ceiling. Another nice back bend, lifting your heart. And then swan dive forward, arms separating. Pivot at your hips, stretch out halfway to the floor, and then drop in the ragdoll. Hands sliding up under your knees, get that halfway up stretch. Shoulders where? Yeah, going toward your waist, not up toward your ears. Bend your knees and all the way to the floor into our child pose. Transition. Hips on your heels, hands, palms up, forehead toward the floor. Take a moment there, just breathing. Exhale any tension. Let those shoulders get a good forward stretch for a moment. And then bring them back as you sit up on your heels. And, you know, let's slide off into step position. So feet ahead of you. Hip width apart or a little closer. Press out through your heels, up with the toes, pulling them back. Knees toward the ceiling, right in front of your hip joints. Sitting bones slightly behind you, remember, so that you've got that nice seat on the floor. Shoulders back and down, core supporting your spine. And don't forget to raise your crown toward the ceiling. Let's go ahead and bring one foot to the other thigh, letting that knee come down, getting that hip rotator warming up a little bit. So front leg, knee and toes stay up either to the front or over to the side if you want a little easier work on that hip rotator. Hands on your knee if you want, but don't press, just add a little weight if you think that that would be beneficial to getting that knee working toward the floor. It doesn't need to get there, don't worry. We just want to get a little bit more work going through that hip joint. And then bringing your foot and knee into your hands or pull your leg in with your arms wrapped around. Just get that little lubrication going in the outside of the hip there. Stay there or make it more intense if you love it, higher or closer with the leg, only if you want to do that. Always personal practice, do what's right for your body. And then release that leg and feel the difference. Remember that noticing what's going on for you is your yoga practice. Shoulders back and down, core active, and bring the other foot to the top of your left, right leg. So knee coming down again with your hands, not pressing, just adding weight if you'd like, or just let it come down. Stay with that leg in front or over to the side if you want a little bit more release through that hip. And again, just breathe and relax, doing what's right for your body, letting it happen. On your own, hold these things as long as you want to. It's more beneficial, but we never have fun. I call these the sitting on the floor, multitasking, watching TV positions. You can always do more yoga during TV time. And again, bring your knee and foot into your hands or pull it in closer to your body for that rotation through the outside of your hip. Maximize or not, your choice. <clears throat> and 
And then as you exhale, bring that leg back out to the front. We're gonna bring the bottoms of the feet together into butterfly. Let those knees come out toward the sides and clasping your hands, pull the feet in. Allow that inner thigh to release and relax as much as it wants to. Again, core active, keep that spine supported, keep those shoulders going toward your waist. And then bring your hands behind under your shoulders, fingertips or palms down, whatever works for you. And a little pressure into the hands and you'll notice that core working slightly differently and releasing maybe a little bit through those inner thighs, letting those knees maybe come further down toward the floor if they want to. Let those bottoms of your feet kind of rotate up. That helps to release that as well. Take a moment and breathe. Feel that heart opening. And then exhaling, bring your hands back to your feet. Lift your knees and bring the legs back out into staff position. Sitting bones still behind you. Remember, you can pad under you if you need to for that pelvic tilt. Make that a little more comfortable. Take a breath there. And let's do a little work with both our hips and our shoulders. So a little cow's head pose. Bend your right knee to the front. Bring that right heel back near your left hip or over to that side somewhere. And then bend your left knee and put it as much over the right knee as you can with those heels about across from each other wherever they are. We've got the left leg on top, so bring your right arm out, palm toward the ceiling, hand above your shoulder. Bend your elbow, bring that hand down into your neck area, sliding along your spine. And then take your other hand and pull that elbow in also towards your spine. Push your head back into that arm that's in the air. We don't want to be rounding. We want a nice straight spine. And then take your left hand around and bend the elbow and see if you can clasp your hands behind you. If that's not working, just hold your shirt and work them toward each other. Elbows in toward your spine and then push the up elbow up and the down elbow down. And notice as you're working all that upper body stuff that your hips are just naturally relaxing. Make sure it's still that that head is pushing back, keeping your spine nice and straight. And don't forget to keep breathing as you're in that position, working your shoulders and your hips at the same time. Exhale, let everything relax a little bit more. Maybe both sitting bones sinking a little deeper, both elbows reaching a little bit more. And then if your hands are clasped, let go. Otherwise, just release them. Roll those shoulders around. Feel all that circulation back in your upper body. Oh, yeah. Let's not forget the lower body. Let's release that as well. So back into staff position. Lots of circulation through the hips and the shoulders. And of course, we have to balance the body. So bending your left knee. Heel over by the right hip, and then bend your right knee and put it as much above the left knee as you can get. May not be the same on both sides, don't worry. We're just going to work it as evenly as possible. And so hips relaxing down, right knee on top, left arm out, palm toward the ceiling. Keep the shoulders down as you bring that arm up, bend the elbow hand into your neck area along the spine, pulling that elbow in and letting that hand slide down maybe a little further. Head pushing back, don't let that spine land. Right arm bends around and see if you can clasp on this side. Some people clasp one side and not the other, some both and some neither. So just be aware of where your body is. Remember, we're creatures of habit. We do these things similarly, whatever we're doing during our days. And so our bodies tend to get a little out of balance. So in yoga, we try to balance things up as much as we can. Keep those elbows pulling in and away from each other. Keep those hips relaxing down. Keep that head pushing back into that upper arm so you're not rounding forward. Keep breathing as well. 
Exhale any tension as you relax. It may be a little easier or maybe not, but just do what you can. Exhale any tension. And when you're ready to release, just allow those arms to release and relax, moving those shoulders around for that circulation to return. And releasing the legs again, just noticing how that lower body is working today. And we're going to bring the feet to the end of the mat. Gap position, get that core active, and then just slowly start to roll down. Use that core for support. And then roll maybe a little bit more, pausing as much as you can along the way, just to make sure those abs are working today. And getting all the way down to the floor, just relax your shoulders, relax your lower back and your hips. Bring your arms up to T position. And let's, oh, let's just sitting bones towards your heels back gently down, bring those heels near your sitting bones, knees straight up. Press the back gently down, lift your right leg, cross it over, or keep it next to the other one and lift the feet off the floor. We're just doing our gentle twist. So palms up or down, your choice. Stabilize those shoulders on the floor as you roll the knees over to the side. So the right leg is crossed over. If you're crossed and you're moving the knees over to the left and turning your head to the right. Shoulders down. The more you turn your head, the more that neck area is in the twist. Be gentle if you need to. Always personal practice on twists. Knees coming as far toward the floor only as they choose to go. You can use padding if you need to always to minimize that twist in that lower back area. Take a breath, just relax. And then bring your heels back toward your hips, roll onto your back, uncross and cross the other way if you were crossing your legs, otherwise knees next to each other. Again, roll the knees to the side, turn your head to the opposite side. Go as deep into your twist on this side as your body likes. Shoulders down, hands either palms up or down. Either way is fine. Knees down for that lower back twist. Head turning for that neck area twist. Remember, whatever's right for you only. Don't force it. Keep breathing. Those exhalations help you release into the twist as much as your body needs today. Take a breath, just let it relax. And of course, when you're ready to release, heels back to your hips, roll onto your back, and cross if you were crossed. Bring your feet to the floor and slide them out, each hip width apart, and your hands, palms up, shoulders down into the surface beneath you. Close your eyes and focus inward. Draw your toes toward each other and then just release that lower body. Deep breath in. Exhale, let everything go. And just let your body soften and sink, deepening into that surface beneath you when it's ready. Soften your belly, soften your shoulders, soften your hips. Everything just growing heavy, sinking deeper into that earth support. Just letting your body deepen, exhaling any tension. Just allow your awareness of your body to release from your attention. As you do, other thoughts will come to your mind. Just let those thoughts drift away as easily as your breath floating away without awareness. And as you breathe more deeply, your body sinks heavy into the earth's support. Allow your mind to float more freely, letting the thoughts just disappear. No need to remember the past. No need to anticipate the future. Let the thoughts drift in and out as easily as your breath. And allow your awareness to release both your body and your mind. Allow those thoughts to drift 
and your mind to relax along with your body. And allow your awareness to turn inward. Find that peace within and feel your mind, feel your body. Just be peace. And of course, if you keep relaxing, it's even more beneficial. But if you need to get ready for the rest of your day, just begin drawing energy and awareness with the breath back to the moment, to the room, to your body. And as you breathe more deeply, just begin moving your body gently, however feels good for you today. When you're ready for that final yoga hug of appreciation for the day, Setting bones toward your heels, draw your heels up toward your hips and your knees in toward your heart. Wrap your arms around, give yourself a good appreciative yoga hug, however is feeling right for you. Give the shoulders a stretch and that spine a little release. And when you're ready to return for the rest of your day, bring your head and feet to the floor, roll over to the side and sit back up. Getting ready for whatever's ahead for you today. Thanks for joining me.